In this screencast, you'll see a live demonstration of a system that uses continuous deployment of features based on a recent code commit to GitHub. You can access this live demo right now by going to demo.stelligent.com. Also, all the code is available in open source form by going to github.com slash stelligent slash dromedary. So this is a simple Node.js application which you can click on any of the colors to vote for your favorite color. And you can see the results of your votes and others in real time. So as I add new colors, you can see the results of those votes occur. And what's more, as, as I make deployment changes, and you see those deployment changes, those are going to occur in real time as I make those changes. So while it's a simple application, it uses many of the types of services and tools that you might define in your enterprise systems, such as EC2, Route 53, DynamoDB, VPC, Elastic IP, and ENI. It's also built on tools such as CloudFormation, Chef, CodePipeline, and Jenkins. So I, I want you to imagine that there's several engineers on your team that have a dashboard like this on a large monitor showing AWS CodePipeline. CodePipeline is a service released by AWS in July 2015. With CodePipeline, you can model your continuous delivery and your continuous deployment workflows from the point at which someone commits new code to a version control repository until it gets released to production. And you can see here that there's a failure associated with the infrastructure test. So let's take a look at that failure in Jenkins. So many of you may already be familiar with Jenkins as it's a continuous integration server. And in the context of this demo, we're using code pipeline to orchestrate our continuous deployment workflow. And then we're using Jenkins to perform the execution of all the code that creates the software system. Now the reason for this failure is because we've written a test to prevent just anyone from being able to SSH into the instance from just a, a random host. So I'm going to put my infrastructure developer hat on and look at the test that failed. So this is an RSpec test to test whether port 22 is accessible to any host. This test gets run with every time someone commits any code to the version control repository. So based on this test failure, I'm going to look at the CloudFormation template that provisions the application infrastructure. So the app instance underscore JSON file is a CloudFormation template that defines parameters, conditions, mappings, and resources, along with outputs for the application infrastructure. With CloudFormation, there are over 100 built-in AWS resources that we can define in code. So here I'm looking at a resource in this template that defines the security group for the EC2 instance that's hosting the application. And I can see that the CIDR block is open to the world. It's all zeros. So I'm going to update this to a specific IP address using the dash 32 CIDR notation. And what I might normally do is just commit this change to the version control repository. Um, but I'm going to actually make several other changes. So you'll see some visual changes occur as well. So first I'm going to do is in that pie chart, I'm going to add a new color to this Node.js application. So I'm going to add the color orange. And I'm also going to update the unit in the functional test. We're using Mocha and Chai for this. And you may have already uh, noticed something in the applications. I'm not using SSL. So it goes to the HTTP instead of HTTPS. And that's insecure. So I'm going to make some other code changes to enable SSL in my application. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at a server spec test. And this is a um, infrastructure deployment testing language that allows me to run um, these tests automatically as a part of uh, that pipeline. It gets incorporated into that. And so I'm going to update these tests to verify that uh, we are listening on port 443 and it fails otherwise. And then I'm going to make um, some changes because we're using a temporary certificate and so it's going to go into accept that. 
and then I'm going to include a recipe and this is using the chef configuration management tool which I'll talk about a little bit later but basically what it does is it enables this recipe so it's a series of um, declarations in this uh, recipe that configures the SSL uh, temporary certificate as a part of this process so now I'm going to commit my changes I'm going to do a git status verify all the changes that I made so I have some test changes I have um, the confirmation template that I changed and then also the visual change um, that I made as well so I'll commit these and then I'm going to push this to github so github is the version control repository that we're using and so you can see that I just made this uh, commit right now and so we can look at these changes you can see that I added um, the SSL recipe chef recipe um, so that gets enabled I'm also um, accepting that a temporary certificate will be uh, verified as a part of the test I added the color orange updated the CIDR block um, so that it's restricted to an IP address for port 22 and then I also updated the unit and the functional test as well so all along the way code pipeline is polling github uh, looking for any changes and when it finds those changes it starts to kick off a series of stages and actions and so we have four stages and then we have a source stage we have a commit stage acceptance uh, stage and then finally a production stage and then we have a series of actions within these stages and so we have build unit test stack code analysis these are all running in parallel um, and then also the acceptance test and the infrastructure tests also are running in parallel and so you can see right now that uh, code pipeline has discovered these changes and so it's going to run through all the steps um, that you have that we've defined for our release process um, so it's going to build and unit test and it's going to spin up an environment from confirmation um, from code it's going to run acceptance tests and infrastructure tests as well so you can now see that it's gone through all the stages and all the actions successfully and it's gone all the way to production um, without me making any other changes or, or really lifting a finger at this point and so let's launch the demo you can see that um, it has the temporary certificate so I'll confirm that and we can see that it's added the new color so we can start voting on that uh, on the new orange color and as you know we've made several changes you saw the fact that it's a, a temporary certificate so there's a SSL change um, then also the visual change along with the test and then we also restricted the access uh, at least the uh, port 22 access to the EC2 instance uh, for the application that's that's running so what happened is it spun up a new infrastructure and used the, the blue green deployment pattern to switch to the new environment using Route 53 with the blue green deployment we've got a production environment and we can call this blue and then we have a pre-production environment that looks exactly like production we'll call this green and then we commit the changes to github and the code pipeline orchestrates these changes by spinning up the green environment and then it uses route 53 to move all the traffic to the green environment or another way of putting this is that you're switching between production and pre-production environments anyway with this approach you can continue serving users without them experiencing any downtime you can also potentially roll back to the blue environment and that can become production again if anything goes wrong with the deployment so let's summarize what happened I made an application infrastructure and security change as code committed them to Git, and it automatically went through a deployment pipeline using code pipeline and Jenkins which was also defined in code and it built ran unit and functional tests and then stored the distribution then it launched an environment from code and deployed the application using CloudFormation and Chef and a part of this pipeline it also ran infrastructure tests as code and then deployed to production without anyone lifting another finger and this way you get feedback as soon as an error occurs and it only gets to release to production when it passes through all these checks so you can do the same thing in your enterprises from commit to production in minutes or hours instead of days or weeks just think about what's possible when you're able to make releases a non-event like this thanks for watching